Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the ABR framework version 3. In this episode, I want to explain a bit about the underlying structure of the AVR framework. In order to best support multiplayer and agile development, we move to an entirely component-based approach. Almost all essential functionality is driven or controlled by components. So let's take a look at this simple scenario with a button that should open a chest. Um, here in this case, the pawn wants to um, press the button to, to open the chest and uses that um, to interact with the select component and the select component is set uh, to communicate with the open component of the chest. So as soon as uh, the pawn presses the select component, it will trigger the chest to open. The select component we categorize as an interact component. There exists, exists several interact components, such as the grab component for grabbing, the latch component for when I want to latch onto things, the gaze component for when I want to trigger something by looking at it. Basically, the pawn can only interact directly with interact components. The state component, on the other hand, is um, used to state uh, to uh, set the state of an actor. So in this case, um, whether the chest is open or closed. Similar to this, we have an active component to trigger the activity, for example, on a television, whether it's on or off. A visual component, which sets the visual state of an, of an actor, whether it's green or blue. Or a light component, which handles the uh, um, light activity of an actor, so whether it's on or off. So just to recap, the pawn can control the state of an actor by the indirectly um, uh, interacting with it through an interact component. We also have a few other component categories. There is, for example, um, the info category, which um, in a recent video on the pawns, for example, we have seen the VR controller component being used to set uh, controls or the palette component being used to set um, the contents of the palette. All of these are info uh, components which basically um, allow us to attach certain settings to actors. Another component category would be the snapping component uh, uh, would be the snapping components, which obviously contain the requirement co required components for snapping. And lastly, we have uh, the util uh, category, which is um, there for several utility-based uh, components, such as the widget component, for example. Um, and we also have the child actors, which technically aren't um, components, which are actually child actors, but they're supposed to be used as child, as child actor components in order to, to fit this kind of category. Um, most of these components will be explained and used in future tutorial videos. So components allow us to simply add and remove functionality by adding, uh, by adding them to actors. But most importantly, this allows us to handle multiplayer replication on the component and therefore, hopefully, does not have to be implemented on the individual actor itself, but can stay on the, on the component. Although the framework should ideally handle most of the replication, I still cannot stress enough how vitally important an understanding of Unreal Multiplayer concepts is when creating a, and building a multiplayer application. Actually, I would recommend you to pause this video right now and watch the tutorial series on the Unreal replication that I posted in the video description. Even if you're not planning on making a multiplayer application, I would still recommend you to watch that series just because it is ex absolutely good. Um, so watch that series right now. I'll be waiting here. Welcome back. So I can expect you all to be masters in multiplayer programming now. Let's uh, take another look at our example in the multiplayer scenario. Um, now we have the same scenario, but it's running simultaneously on three instances. One of them is a server, and because the server has its own pawn, um, we know it's a listen server. Let's say our client one uh, wants to um, open the chest again using a select component. So the pawn one sees the select component, he wants to interact with that, but um, because the 
a chest should open on all instances at the same time. He needs to ask his um, uh, his instance on the server, so the same client, uh, the same pawn on the server, to interact with the select component instead. So this pawn will then interact with the select component. It will open the chest, and because the open component is replic is said to be replicated, all chests will be opened in every instance. Um, So this is basically all that I wanted to say for this episode. Most components require their own video to cover. And this is the basic structure that uh, most of the components will have. Due to the new structure, almost all of the functionality will be and should be inside components. But I must notice that this ar architecture is still very young and especially the multiplayer is still not bulletproof. You might encounter some errors and if you think of or develop any improvements, I would be extremely grateful if you can help me improve the architecture.